and this is going to be chapter 11 uh, introducing the heart block rhythms objectives describe the electrical conduction system of the heart <clears throat> describe and identify a first degree AV block including EKG characteristics uh, describe and identify a second degree AV block Mobitz type 1 or Winky block including EKG characteristics Describe and identify a second degree AV block, Mobitz type 2, including EKG characteristics. Describe and identify a third degree AV block, a complete heart block, including EKG characteristics. And discuss the clinical significance of heart block rhythms. <clears throat> Origin of the heart block rhythms. The rhythms are classified according to the heart structure in which they begin or their site of origin. The sinoatrial node generates impulses, but they are blocked or delayed in the area of the heart's electrical conduction system. This, these are AV nodal blocks. If the blockage or delay develops, the impulse will be a partial, incomplete, or a complete heart block. Rhythms that are primarily disorders of the conduction system are called heart blocks. Heart blocks can either permanent be can be either permanent or transient, minor or significant. You should recall that that patient assessment is the most important indicator of clinical significance. Components of the electrical conduction system of the heart. Electrical impulses originate in the sinoatrial node. They then go through the internodal pathways. They then arrive at the AV node and go through the bundle of His and down into the right and left bundle branches to the Purkinje fibers and then to the myocardial muscle. So again, starts off in the SA node, interatrial pathways, AV node, bundle of His, right, left, Purkinje. Purkinje. Each one of these are going to have an intrinsic rate, 60 to 100 for the SA node, 40 to 60 for the AV node, and then from the ventricular muscle, 20 to 40. <coughs> and again, shown here, SA, 60 to 100, AV, 40 to 60, and then Purkinje network, 20 to 40 beats per minute. Your primary pacemaker site, which is your sinoatrial node, your secondary pacemaker site, which is your AV node, and then last but not least is your last pacemaker site, which is the Purkinje network, and each one of them holding an intrinsic rate 60 to 100, 40 to 60, and then 20 to 40. A first degree AV block is the most usual form of our block results from excessive conduction delay in the AV node. The impulse conduction between the atria and the bundle of His is delayed at the level of the AV node. The normal PR interval is less than 0 0.20 seconds, and this will be prolonged. This is how you're going to identify the AV nodal block, is a PR interval that is greater than 0 0.20 seconds. A first degree AV block is not actually a dysrhythmia. Presence indicates only a delay at, AV no at the AV node rather than a definite block. It may occur in patients who have no history of heart disease and sometimes seen in young athletes. It can be caused by medications. Examples of this are going to be beta blockers, calcium channel blockers, or digoxin. If a patient is diagnosed with an acute myocardial infarction or an AMI, you must be alert for the development of more serious blocks. Remember, the prolonged PR interval is the hallmark of the first degree block and is commonly the only variation on the EKG strip. A PR interval is greater than 0 0.20 seconds or 5 boxes in duration. 5 small boxes in duration. So, by the 5 step process, what is the rate? And this is based on what the underlying rhythm is. Is it regular? It's usually regular. 
Is there a P wave? Yes. Are they Puru? Yes. The only thing that's different, the only thing that's going to set this aside is number four. What is the length of the pure interval? And this length will be greater than 0 0.20 seconds. Do all the QRSs look alike? Yes. What is the length of the QRS complex? And that's going to be less than 0.12 seconds or normal. This is the only thing that is wrong with this entire rhythm. One, two, three, four, five, six. I got six and a half, which is point. Two six in duration, which is greater than point two zero. First degree AV block is identified by a pure interval greater than point two zero seconds. A second degree heart block type one or a winky block is a less is less serious than a second than the second type which is a second degree type 2, the progressive delay of an electrical impulse at the AV node produces an increase in the length of the PR interval. The PR interval continues to increase in length until the impulse is not conducted or the QRS complex is dropped. The pattern is repetitive throughout the duration of the rhythm. Impulses, impulse does not reach the ventricles, therefore ventricular contraction does not occur. Ventricular rhythm is irregular. Atrial rhythm remains regular. A second degree Mobitz type 1 is also referred to as a Winkybach phenomenon. can be caused by abnormal conduction of the impulses at the AV node and precipitated by AV nodal ischemia, digitalis therapy, or an increase in vagal tone. By the five step process, uh, step 1 on the rate. The atrial rate is unaffected. Ventricular rate is usually slower. How we're going to identify this is a slowly progressive PR interval until we drop a beat. At the point that we drop the beat, the atrial beat will still continue, but the ventricular beat will not. What is the rhythm? The atrial rhythm is regular. The ventricular rhythm is irregular. That's due to the fact that it is dropping a beat and as the PR interval progresses. Is there a P wave before every QRS? Yes. Are the P waves upright and uniform? Yes. For the ones that are conducted, they are. What is the length of the PR interval? Progressively prolongs until the QRS is not conducted. Or we have a progressive PR interval until we drop a beat. Do all the QRS complexes look alike? Yes. What is the length of the QRS complexes? And the answer to that is less than 0.12 seconds. Again, we're going to identify this by the PR interval again, only this time the PR interval is slowly going to progress until we drop a beat. So as we're looking at this, distance between here, larger distance here, and where is my QRS? This is a second degree AV block type 1 identified by a progressive PR interval until we drop a beat. Again, a second degree Mobitz type 1. Bam. Where's my QRS? Bam. Bam. Where's my QRS? This one's a little quicker. Second degree Mobitz type 1. Slowly progress a PR interval until we drop a beat. This one's elongated out, but still a second degree type 1. PR interval here. Wider. Wider still. Way wide. Dropped beat. Slowly progressive PR interval increase until we drop a beat. A second degree AV block Mobis type 2 is a more serious dysrhythmia than either the first degree block or Mobis type 1. 
It indicates an increased risk of progression to a third degree block or complete heart block occurs when there's an intermittent interruption of conduction near or below the AV junction. The SA node is generating electrical impulses at a regular rate. You should note that the P wave occur in a regular pattern across the EKG strip. Some P waves are not followed by a QRS complex. Impulses, impulse is blocked in one bundle branch and has a partial block in the other. The QRS complex may be dropped or non-conducted. The AB node is a gatekeeper to ventricles. Gatekeeper closes at regular intervals. When gate closes, impulses cannot be conducted through the bundle of hiss to the ventricles. No QRS complex is produced. We'll refer to the ratio of P waves to QRS complexes. Ratio may vary or may be constant. The ratio is often a 2 to 1 conduction, a 3 to 1 conduction, or a 4 to 1 conduction, or 2 P waves for 1 QRS, and on and on and on. 3 P waves for 1 QRS, 4 P waves for 1 QRS. The QRS duration will be widened greater than 0.12 seconds. PR intervals are regular for conducted beats. The atrial rhythm is regular. The ventricular rhythm is irregular due to dropped or non-conducted beats. Associated with an acute myocardial infarction, septal wall necrosis, acute myocarditis, or advanced artery disease. Depending on the ventricular rate, it may be symptomatic or asymptomatic. If your ventricular rate is 20 beats per minute, I can promise you, you will be symptomatic. By the numbers in the five-step process, what is the rate? Well, the atrial rate is regular. The ventricular rate may even be bradycardic. So your atrial rate is regular, your ventricular rate is completely different. What is the rhythm? Your atrial rhythm is regular, your ventricular rhythm is irregular. In this one, you're going to see us firing off two or three P waves to one QRS complex. Are there P waves before a QRS? Yes. Some P waves are not followed by a QRS though. Are the P waves upright and uniform? P waves are usually upright and uniform. What is the length of the PR interval? Constant for the conducted beads. Do all the QRSs look alike? Yes. What is the length of the QRS complexes? And that is going to be less than or greater than 0.12 seconds. You may get some variations on this. How we identify this rhythm, though, is not by the QRS complex, but by <clears throat> there are more P waves than QRS complexes whenever we're looking at this six second strip. A second degree Mobitz type 1, and this may change and be variable if you notice, there are three P waves to this one QRS. Now, this didn't happen all the time, and this one here, we had two P waves. But the identifying factor is, is that we have more P waves than we do QRS complexes. Second degree Mobitz type 2. Again, there are more P waves than QRS complexes. We identify this if you have, this is a 3 to 1 conduction whenever this block is occurring at this point. This is a second degree Mobitz type 2 or a second degree AV block type 2. This one here is a little more steady and harder to spot, but there are very rhythmically two P waves to every QRS. Again, more P waves than QRSs, a second degree Mobitz type 2. Third degree AV block or complete heart block is the most serious type of, it, of heart block, may progress to a systole because the ventricular rate is usually very slow and ineffective. Complete heart block is often referred to as a lethal dysrhythmia. Atrial and ventricles are commonly blocked and are separated from each other electrically. They beat independently of each other. The SA node uh, fires at 60 to 100 times per minute. The ventricular ventricles paced by an escape pacemaker either at the junctional tissues, a narrower QRS, 
or ventricular tissues, a widened QRS, at a rate of about 20 to 40 beats per minute. Term AV disassociation because the atria and the ventricles beat independently. <clears throat> Peer intervals will be variable in length. Some P waves may be buried in the QRS complex and not visible on the EKG strip. Pattern illustrates regular occurring P waves and QRS complexes. However, there is no association or no relationship between the P waves and the QRSs. What this means is, is the P waves are going to be marching out and doing their own thing, and the QRSs are going to be marching out and doing their own thing. Each one of them will take over the associated intrinsic rate of its pacemaker site. So a third degree block by the numbers. What's the rate? <clears throat> Atrial rate's usually 60 to 100 beats per minute. The ventricular rate is based on the escape pacemaker site. If it is at the AV node, it's going to be running at about 40 to 60. If it's in the ventricular muscle, about 20 to 40. Step 2. What is the rhythm? The atrial rhythm is regular. The ventricular rhythm is regular. They're just not associated with one another. Is there a P wave before every QRS? The answer is, is no. There is no relationship to the QRS complexes. And are the P waves upright and uniform? Yes, they are. Just not conducting into the ventricles. What is the length of the pure interval? Totally variable and there's no pattern. What are, do all the QRSs look alike? Yes. And what is the length of the QRSs? And this again is going to be based on the escape pacemaker site. If you're running from the junction, the QRS width is going to be less than 0.12. If you're running from the ventricular muscle, the QRS width will be greater than 0.12. Again, if you'll ever want to look at this, the P waves is probably hidden in there, are marching off, kind of doing their own thing. This is it right here. Another one, probably somewhere in here. So the P waves are doing their own thing, and obviously, in this case here, the QRSs are doing their own thing. They're running at about 30 beats per minute. <clears throat> well, the P waves, 300, 150, 100, better than 75 beats per minute. A third degree heart block is identified by... The, the atria doing their own thing, or the P waves doing their own thing, and the QRS is doing their own thing, and there's no association between them. Again, if we'll look at the P waves, a lot of P waves firing, but again, there's no P wave before the QRS, and the QRS is wide. Again, to identify a third degree block, no association or disassociation between the atria and the ventricles. Each one of them are doing their own thing. Last one here, third degree heart block. This is probably a P wave. P wave. P wave. P wave. P wave. P -wave, P -wave, P -wave. So again, the P waves are doing their own thing, and the QRSs are doing their own thing. Third degree block is identified by complete disassociation or no association with the P waves to the QRSs. This is the end of chapter 11, Introduction to Heart Blocks.